on finishing up the headland here. Look at how smooth that all looks. I'm impressed. I don't even need to talk about it. The job stands for itself. Just like that 5200 that we uh, demoed last fall and ended up buying one because they just do a remarkable job. Alright guys, today's the day. I'm excited. We're going to get the 2200 Salford out. This thing is here on a demo, like I said in the last video. So the reps are coming out to make sure we get it all set up right so it's performing at its finest. And we're going to go out and play in the dirt a little bit today. So I'm going to fire this up. They should be here in maybe 15-20 minutes. So I'm excited to see Andrew and Kyle again. I believe they're both coming. We'll see. We'll see. We just got done fixing a tire on the water trailer there. Blew it up, made it two trips to town, blew a tire, sidewall opened up like a banana. Wasn't good. Luckily it didn't wreck the fenders or anything, and we had another tire on hand, so it was only like a 15 minute fix. But regardless, I see they're on the driveway. I hope they're ready for a camera in their face. So we just got done unfolding it, setting hydraulic flows basically in the screen here. Uh, just every different piece of equipment needs different speeds of the hydraulics. We made sure it was level from the setup shop, which it was. We didn't have to adjust that. Maybe in the field we might have to tweak with it because everything changes in the field. How the coulters make different ruts and stuff like that in front of them. And so that might be an infield adjustment, but maybe not. We'll see. Get her folded up here and we're heading to the field to play with it. Okay, right now I just went like 100 feet. We're doing a depth check. Just because it's new, we have no idea where we're starting at. What? We gotta go deeper. Deeper? Raise it up a little then? Yep, if we can. You went the wrong way, man. <laughs> Kyle, you went the wrong way. Not yet. Brand new here. Don't I worry, should, I, it I wasn't on camera. I shouldn't I should have I shouldn't have raised that inch in the yard because I went back an inch. Ah. Okay. So Alright. It's dry enough that we won't plug the baskets up. I don't think you gotta worry about that. <laughs> I was looking forward to using that air compressor, see if we could ghost ride it one more time. <laughs> so I like what I was just told. If you can pull it at 11, 12 miles an hour, do it. Yes, sir. I will do my best or the tractor will. So we got the depth set to where they feel it should be running. So we are going to send it. Cruise control here. Seventy-five percent load at ten miles an hour. It's tap fourteenth gear. There's twelve point two miles an hour. What do we got here? We got a 80% load at 12.2 miles an hour with a 41 foot. Yep, yep, I like it. I like the speed. Look at that dust. Dug out. <laughs> Goes in the dust cloud. All right, we got a 56, 57 acres per hour at a 12 miles an hour 1700 rpms 600 quad track 80 percent engine load i like how easy it pulls so they do make a 51 footer but this demo is a 41 footer because it is kind of what a lot of guys like so it'll be easier for them to sell it if we don't buy it 
the cheese a dust making machine. And I'm gonna stop when I get up to this end and we're gonna look at what it's been doing for a job and make sure we like the depth and everything. That's moving. How fast are you going? 12. And it's at 80% engine load only. And what's your uh, acres per hour? About uh, 58. 58? Yep. Fuel? Did you, uh, you fuel 24 gallons yeah. an hour? I did not look at acres. Three? Three and a half? So consistent all the way across. So what is the idea of this rather than a field cultivator? This is more of a vertical tillage tool? This is more vertical tillage, so what you're hoping is you're gonna go and plant into a little bit more loose dirt. So the seed, when it goes down, doesn't hit a hard pan and have to okay. go sideways. Should be able to work itself right down through there. You have a good picket fence stand, good seed to soil contact. So basically, we can go deeper with this than the field cultivator without bringing up mud. Yeah, and with you know, the newer style planters, you're gonna be able to put that seed right where you want it. You know, okay. and it's not too deep, too shallow, anything like that. Good consistency all the way across. And look at how mulched up it is. It's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. We got a fair amount of pressure on the drag. Yep, and we could actually go one more if a guy wanted. Well, it's it's beautifully level. Right here, I was going a lot slower, so you yep. can actually see the chop marks, but over where Dad's at over here, well, look at how nice this is. Beautiful, I like it. I'm excited for the planter to hit this, see what the Delta Force does, see what the uh, Furrow force looks like, and maybe even the John Deere closing system. Maybe, maybe it'll close better. Never know. We'll see. I'm excited. So we're gonna fly the drone here shortly, and they said I had to wear these. I don't know. Do I look weird? <laughs> well, there it is. I flew it off of right here. You think I dare trust it to land back right there? That was impressive. It flew itself. I took it off right there and it landed itself right there. Really? All right. I think we uh, successfully did not crash. Not and it good. landed back where it took off at. Should I get my phone out too? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you can just <laughs> go play with it. Yeah, do what you gotta do, man. All right. So I think we'll probably get out of your hair and that way you guys get stuff done. So. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, helping us get yeah. this thing going. Absolutely, thanks for having us. And call me with questions or whatever. And okay. Five inch spacing. Five inch spacing, yeah. Destroys every inch of the Yes, it, it does within the wave. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, I think we got it adjusted. We took this wing, tilted that one up a little bit out of the ground because it was a little deeper. But otherwise, I think we're pretty good. Yeah. Pretty easy so. to set. It is very easy. Yeah. Easy to make changes if you need to, too, depending on your field conditions. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, see you later. Yeah, I'm thanks, sure Chef. we'll see you when you pick it up. Well, there they go. Thanks for coming out, boys. Time to go have some fun. Do more than one round. And I'm gonna get the camera, this one, matter of fact, out there, get some action shots. So, uh, here we go. I do like how mulched up this is. So Randy, he normally does most of the spring tillage. He runs the big digger 
and he's very fussy so I'm very interested to get him to run this thing and see what he thinks of it so far this is this is a this is like garden it's like you took your tiller out in your garden and we're using a tiller out here nice and smooth broke up all the clumps sweet I had to stop to look at this because they told me that this machine can actually go they said seven to ten days before a field cultivator could go like if it's black or wet out there I'm skeptical of that far before but right here we're looking at mud I'm along a cattail slough here that we've been kind of as the years have been getting a little drier here finally we've been able to get closer and closer to this slough so we got maybe uh, 40 feet here of cattails that we worked up last fall with the 5200 so we got a lot of trash residue it's quite muddy here and it's mellow and not clumpy like a field cultivator would make it it's mulched up pretty impressed look at this a lot of trash right here on my expectations of corn growth is very limited just because of the it not being farmed for so many years but look at that line residue change it's pretty impressive and it is wet no wonder it was pulling so hard probably going a little deep but they said that all these coulters that's why they got so much weight on the frame here is because all these coulters actually want to push the machine out of the ground or carry carry it along so they said actually in some cases it is better off to leave the thing on the ground and go through the wet spot than to try to tease it up like a digger because you just shove your landing gear into the ground make big black muddy streaks it's best to, if you can pull it through there just to let them roll if you can't pull it through there you probably shouldn't be in that spot to begin with you're probably going to be stuck get after it so I'm just sitting here thinking about this machine and the acres per hour that I'm doing of 58 acres an hour and they say you got to grease the uh, hubs every hundred hours that means every 5800 acres you have to grease it so like once a season then all right deal no maintenance I like it I'll tell you 12 miles an hour along the edge of the field Maybe should downshift a little bit. But I got a lot to do today, so I can't slow down. I want to get this edge of the field where we've been playing with all cleaned up so that's dry and so Dad has something to do maybe later tonight. So this thing is actually built for speed. It, it likes the 10 miles an hour to 12 miles an hour. They said if you ever see the blades starting to whip, that means you're going too fast. But they look like they're riding really nice. If you go too slow, it actually won't fling and destroy the the dirt as well so you do want to go a little faster so if you're not in the speed probably aren't gonna like this but we like speed high speed planner this will match up with it real nice so another thing I like about this thing is 41 feet wide I really don't need to have an operator that can judge dis distance quite as well as like a 65 foot digger um, Yes, you're going faster, but it's smaller. You don't have to look as wide. You don't have to judge so much along the edge of the fields. So that's a benefit. You can get just as many acres an hour done with a narrower implement. Oh boy, this is wet. This is wet here. Oh, she's bogging. Oh, this was a mistake. Oh, this was a mistake. Downshifting. Thing he's got an RX to plant with now because that was that that's gonna be that might plug up the planter. Woo! Wee! So satisfying watching this thing work when you can see it. I mean, the dust is unbelievable just because of the speed, and it's pretty dry out here except for on the edges. This is a pretty rocky farm here to begin with, and it seems to be handling rocks just fine. Each spring has six inches of uh, travel. Obviously, you ain't gonna want to hit one that's sticking out of the ground, but you don't want to do that with any implement. But they do have six inches of travel. They've been handling all the fist size rocks very well. I gotta have to turn that beeping sound off. That sure is annoying. Well, this is my last pass for this this video. I gotta go get seed to dad. And uh, I believe 
we're gonna have to call an operator to come run this thing as soon as fields are fit I'm excited to see and get it out into corn stalks for when we're planting beans see how that does mulching up all that stuff I think it'll be I think it'll be really cool so you'll see more of this beast in action just not not today so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed huge shout out to Salford for letting us uh, use this thing and demo it show all you guys what they have to offer highline pole missed it we're good anyways guys I appreciate it we'll see you in the next video